Hey there besties, welcome back to Nurse Chung, where you break down the science so well you might actually remember it for your exam. Today we're talking stem cells, the kind that literally make up everything in your body. And because I love a good ranking system, we're going to be ranking these babies from the most powerful, the GOAT, the all-time, to the least powerful, our bench warmers. Let's get started. So let's get into the backbone about all living things, stem cells. These bad boys are the OG cells of the body, AKA they are the mothers of all mothers because they have one most critical job, making all the other cells. But here's the deal, not all stem cells are created equal. Some have superstar level powers, while others, well, let's just say they are very niche in their skill set. There's two things that you need to remember when it comes to stem cells. All stem cells have two major superpowers, self renewal and potency. When it comes to self renewal, these cells can keep making more of themselves, like a copy machine gone rogue. They never run out unless they differentiate into specific cell types. When we talk about potency, we're talking about their power level, how many different types of cells they can become. The higher the potency, the more cell types they can create. Think of potency like a career path. Some people known as totipotent cells can do anything, be anyone, go anywhere. They're like the multi-billionaire entrepreneurs. And then we have others called unipotent cells only have one job and one job only. It's like an employee stamping the same specific form all day, every day. Now let's rank these stem cells from our goats to our basics. First up, we have totipotent, the ultimate goat of stem cells. A mnemonic I like to use is totipotent totally can do it all. So these are the most powerful stem cells in the game. They're literally making up the entire human body. If stem cells were superheroes, totipotent cells would be Superman. No limits, no restrictions, just raw power. So a great example of this would be the zygote. Yes, that tiny little single cell stage where sperm meets egg. Think about it. That one cell alone makes up everything, your organs, tissues, and even the placenta, because we can't forget about the baby's life support system. So how does it work? Zygotes are going to divide into two, four, eight, 16 cell stages before they ultimately become a blastocyte. Once it hits that blastocyte stage, that power level is going to drop and it's no longer a totipotent cell. Next up, we have pluripotent, the almost gift. A mnemonic to remember for this is pluripotent means plenty, but not all. Pluripotent cells can become up to 200 plus cell types in the human body. It could be our skin, brain, heart, muscle, you name it. But here's the deal. They can't make the placenta, so they can't form a whole new human on their own. You can think of them like Dr. Strange, still extremely powerful, but with some limitations. An example of this would be the inner cell mass found inside of our blastocyte, which eventually forms the baby's organs. Pluripotent cells specialize in three germ layers. We have the ectoderm, which is the outer layer, the mesoderm, which is the middle layer, and the endoderm, which is the inner layer. Starting with our ectoderm layer, it can become things like our skin cells, our brain and spinal cord cells, like our neurons, as well as pigment cells, like melanocytes. So when we move on to our mesoderm layer, this makes up several different kinds of muscle tissues, like cardiac muscle, skeletal muscle, and smooth muscle, as well as our red blood cells and kidney cells. And then lastly, we have our endoderm layer, where you see things like our lungs, thyroid, and digestive system cells. If you're looking for a study tip, think of these like Neapolitan ice cream. There's three layers, each of them with their own specialty. Next up, we have our multipotent cells, the semi-specialists. So multipotent cells can create multiple types of cells, but only within a specific lineage. You can think of them as highly specialized doctors. A cardiologist isn't gonna stop doing cardiology and then suddenly start performing brain surgery. That would be crazy. Nope, they're gonna stick with what they know. So an example of this could be our hematopoietic stem cells. Hematopoietic stem cells are found in the bone marrow and they're ultimately responsible for producing all of our blood cells. But they don't just make any type of cell, they're gonna follow two distinct blood cell lineages. Our first lineage is going to be our myeloid progenitors. This lineage is going to develop all of our blood cells. So our red blood cells, also known as urethrocytes, which are our oxygen carriers, 
platelets known as thrombocytes that's our blood clotting squad we have monocytes known as macrophages they help clean up the body from bacteria as well as debris neutrophils that's our first responders when it comes to infections and basophils and eosinophils which are allergy warriors and then we have our lymphoid progenitors these cells give rise to our lymphocytes so we have our b cells which are antibody producers our t cells which are cell killing specialists they defend the body against disease and infection and then we have our natural killer cells which hunt down viruses and cancer cells Another example is our mesenchymal stem cells. Mesenchymal stem cells are found in our bone marrow, fat, and umbilical cord tissue. And instead of making blood cells, they're actually builders of the body's connective tissue. These cells can differentiate into bone cells known as osteoblasts. That's the foundation of our skeleton. Cartilage cells known as chondrocytes, which make up our joints, trachea, and intervertebral discs. Our fat cells known as adipocytes. That's the body energy storage tank and then our muscle cells known as myocytes which is the skeletal muscle formation think of mesenchymal stem cells as the construction crew of the body they're making sure that you have strong bones flexible joints and enough energy for survival a mnemonic that i like to remember is msc which stands for muscles skeleton and cartilage and for our last example we have neural stem cells neural stem cells are found in the brain as well as the spinal cord and they help form and repair the nervous system unlike the others neural stem cells are very limited in what they can become they are still crucial when it comes to brain function and regeneration these cells can differentiate into neurons which are the brain's electrical messengers we have astrocytes which help support and protect our neurons and then we have oligodendrocytes which create myelin the insulin for neurons that speeds up our signals and you know how much i love to give you mnemonics and study aids for this one i like to remember n s c which stands for nerves support and communication for our fourth level of stem cells we have oligopotent which are these small time players i like to nickname these the part timers because they can make a few specific types of cells but not a whole range remember that root word oligo stands for only a few so these stem cells act as subspecialists they can produce multiple related cell types but within a very tight restriction so here's a few things they can create first up we have lymphoblasts that's the immune specialist Specialists. So lymphoblasts can create three major types of immune cells. We have our B cell bodies known as B lymphocytes. We have our T lymphocytes also known as T cells. And we have our natural killer cells also known as NK cells. Myeloblasts are another example of these types of stem cells. They are the white blood cell producers. So they can differentiate into three major types of granulocytes. Those are our infection fighting white blood cells we have our neutrophils our basophils and our eosinophils so here's a fun fact if you're into science being disgusting neutrophils die after fighting infection and they create pus so the key difference between multipotent and oligopotent stem cells is that multipotent stem cells have the ability to differentiate into multiple related cell types within a specific lineage while oligopotent stem cells are more restricted and can only produce a few specific types of cells. So multipotent stem cells serve as precursors to our oligopotent stem cells by giving rise to different kinds of blast cells, which generate into more specialized mature cells. And last up, we have our bench warmer known as our unipotent stem cells, our one trick ponies. I like to name these the one trick ponies because they have one job, one task they can only make one type of cell but what's cool about them is they can still self-renew that specific cell a great example of this would be our germline stem cells also known as sperm production they are the one job wonders they can self-renew and only produce one type of mature cell sperm and think about it boys can create millions upon millions of sperm cells in their life other examples of this could be basal cells known as lung stem cells they only make lung cells we have our epidermal stem cells which make skin 
That's the only cell that they make too. So if you're trying to remember this at the end of the day, when you're taking your exams, just remember uni means one. They can only make one type of cell. And that's a wrap, besties. We just unlocked the secrets when it comes to stem cells from all the powerful totipotent cells to the hyper-specialized unipotent cells. If this video helped you, give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you drop a comment down below with your favorite mnemonic or study tip or if you have any questions. Head over to nursechunkstore.com where you can snatch the PowerPoint or any other goodies that we may have to offer in the store. Stay awesome, stay learning, and as always, let's pass those exams, baby! Bye!